These plastic port lights are fairly typical on these older boats, and if not sealed properly, they do tend to leak. The leaks can often manifest themselves in different areas of the boat, so it may not be obvious that the port light's leaking. This owner has come along and smeared some silicone caulk around the top of the uh, uh, frame. This is fairly typical and you'll see this on a lot of boats, but it's, it's also equally useless. It usually does not solve the problem with the leak. The leaks tend to come wick in from underneath or around the edge, and even though the silicone smeared on the outside of it might seal it temporarily, eventually it's going to start to leak again. So we're going to go ahead and take these apart, take them out, completely clean everything up, remove all of the old caulking, and reinstall them with new caulking. You always want to use a high quality marine silicone, not the type you get from uh, your local hardware store or Home Depot. Um, the reason is the curing agent in the silicone is different. If, it, if you uh, open the tube of silicone and you have that sour vinegar smell to it, that's the wrong stuff and you don't want to use it. On a project like this, it's worth spending the money. It's, it's a false economy to try to save money on, on sealing. Um, the reason you want to use the silicones versus other sealants is, uh, particularly on plastic port lights, is plastics leach oil after a period of time. This sort of makes sense because plastic basically is a petroleum product. So you want to make sure that uh, you use silicone because silicone will stick to it. The oils won't affect the silicones, um, whereas they will affect the other sealants. So uh, I pull a lot of these port lights out that have been bedded in with 5200. It sticks like a son of a bitch in some places, but not all places. It'll give loose in certain areas, come loose from the plastic, the water will start to seep in, and then you've got real problems. So remember, always use good quality silicone. If you check with the port light manufacturers, that's what they recommend. Port light leaks can sort of be insidious. They don't always show up right underneath the port light inside of the boat. And I see a lot of damage caused to woodwork. A small, weeping, freshwater leak can rot wood like you would not believe. A lot of times, these boats are built with fiberglass shell and then plywood set up inside of that. The water will leak in between that fiberglass and plywood, and that will cause the water to come out in a different location, sometimes far away. Checking for leaks, always check around the port lights as well. Don't just assume it's somewhere else. These are a fairly common area for leaks. Also, I see a lot of owners delay repairing the port light simply because they think it is a big project. It's not a small project, but it's not that hard. I've seen some major damage done just over some small port light leaks simply because the owner was afraid to fix it. So that's why we're going to go through this today. That's why I'm going to teach you how to fix this without any problem. It's really not that hard of a project. It's one easily tackled by most amateurs. All right, let's get started.
thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove all these screws from the trimmer. Oops. What we want to do is try to open this up in one corner. And it helps to get a nice stiff putty knife and kind of work it in there. You just kind of work one quarter in and wiggle it back and forth some so that you can cut the caulking. And then you just push it along and cut the caulking out. It helps to sometimes sharpen them. Rock the putty knives back and forth while you try to work them in. If the ceiling's really hard to cut, try using one of the oscillating tools with the scraper blade on it. Make sure you don't use a blade with teeth on it or you might damage the fiberglass and the port light. Try to open it up a little bit and work the blade in, then turn the tool on and start cutting. And now quickly cut that caulking out of there. On these, it's not... There we go. And there we go. Now just gently bring that off. A little bit of time, don't try too fast or you break the plastic. Okay, now we have the trim ring off, and we can clearly see down in here this, um, where you see it's kind of uh, dirty and blackish looking. I can even see a little bit of moisture in there. You can see that's exactly where the trim ring was looking. You can see this open gap down here, and then coming back up along this corner. Now they used a fairly tough adhesive. I'm thinking this, this feels a lot like 5200. And the fact that it's kind of peeled some of the fiberglass a little bit would indicate 5200. But this is typical failure of 5200. It just does it in a few spots, but not all over. Okay, our next trick is we're going to take a sharp, fairly sharp chisel, and we're going to try to clean this sealant off of here. And it's going to be a little bit of work to kind of worry all that stuff off. But you just got to have to kind of scrape along and and take it out. Don't worry about getting it out of the inside of the grooves just yet. We'll come back to that. What we want to do is just kind of cut it off of the surfaces first to get the bulk of it out of our way.
Now that I've got the bulk of the caulking off, I'm going to use the oscillating tool to cut in and around the port light. This is to break the bond between the port light and the house side. And then the next step will be to go inside and take the port light out. go inside the boat and remove the, uh, crap in the first step of course will be to remove all of the screws once the screws are out we're going to need to pry the port light out to do this I'm gently prying it open a little bit with a screwdriver and then I'm going to use a claw hammer to gently pull on it. Note how I'm putting the putty knife underneath the claw hammer. In this particular boat we're replacing some of the woodwork and refinishing so I'm not being quite as careful as I could be. But if you plan on keeping the woodwork the same I strongly recommend that you use a putty knife or something else underneath the claw hammer. Be careful when peeling the port light out that it doesn't lift any veneer off of any woodwork you may have. Now that the port light's out, it's time to clean it up and remove all of the old caulking off of it. This can be a somewhat tedious job, but you need to do a good job of it to make sure you get all of the old sealing off. Once again, I use a fairly sharp chisel to do this. Once you have the port light all cleaned up, it's time to do a final cleaning up on the house side. Make sure you remove all of the sealant left over in and around the uh, port light opening. And lastly, I'm going to use a small disc sander to just do a final clean up and rough up the surface. It also gets rid of all the contaminants. We are going to use acetone on this. Acetone works good for cleaning stuff off of fiberglass. You have to be careful when using it around plastics like the port light. Always do a test area first. Whenever solvent, you can see what we've got. And at this point, you probably want to come back along and try to now you can see what sealant is still left. A little tedious, you want to make sure you get as much on it as you can. clean port light itself before putting it back in. Once again, you need to make sure that this plastic is going to be compatible. I've done a test of Come back now that I've got it clean. When doing the final cleaning, I sometimes find it helps to drag the chisel backwards like a scraper to remove the last of the right. sealant now film. We'll pop that back in from the inside and we'll be ready to set up the trim ring. Okay, this shows just surprisingly how easily this sealant comes off of this plastic and why you have to use the right sealant when sealing plastic. You can see it barely sticks to it and comes cleanly off. 
leaving almost no trace of the cock behind afterwards. In some places it'll stick fairly tenaciously, but in other places it just gives it right up and leaves a shiny plastic surface behind just as if there had never been any caulk there. So this is exactly why you got to use the right sealant when sealing plastic fittings. Now that all the old sealant has been removed from the port light and the boat, the next step is to go ahead and install the port light from the inside. This is relatively simple. We just screw it in without right. using any sealant at all. Okay, now that I've got everything cleaned up, I've got my trim ring ready to go over here. So what I will do is I've, you can see I've taped off a rough tape job. So I'll place my trim ring over there. Make sure that doesn't blow away because it's windy as crap out here. And, uh, okay, so now I have a couple of screws in here, and I have the tape set on there, the tape just set to the edge. I taped underneath the radiuses, so what I'm going to do is with a sharp razor knife, just very easily, lightly cut that tape. I'll do that on all four corners, take the trim ring back off, and then I can just peel that little bit of tape out of there so that we'll have a perfect fit on there when we do our caulking. Okay, now with the trim ring removed, I can come in and just very gently lift that off of there. And I'll have my radius cut, so that'll make a nice clean caulk line. Now that we've got everything cleaned up and ready to go, we're going to switch the caulk in. We want to push it down deep as we can into that void until it kind of bubbles up behind the caulk gut. And we'll go all around it, pushing that caulk deep in there. Okay. All right, we'll come along this side. And, we'll... and the trickiest part is usually getting underneath the bottom. And that's where I see a lot of leaks is where people fail. Be really careful, get your face down in there. Even if it's a little more difficult, you gotta make sure you get that sealed up good along the bottom. If there's any voids or chips, you wanna make sure you get them good. You wanna make sure you get the screw holes good. Once again, too much is better than too little. Now it's time to put the trim ring on. I hope I got this upside right. If I don't, the holes won't line up. Got 50-50 chance, right? And we got it. Okay. We want to get that too tight when we put the screws in. We want to just kind of snug it down. And we'll go. You don't want to squeeze out all the caulk. comes the fun part of cleaning up the caulking. But before we do that, we want to look around, make sure that there's caulking coming out all of these edges all the way around. And if you see a spot where it's not coming out, I always come back and I've got a little area down here that I think I'll touch up and just squeeze a little extra in there just to make sure. And once again, check this bottom edge fairly carefully sure that it's well sealed down on the bottom. The paper towel here. What we'll do is we'll just come along and take that excess caulking off. And you 
don't want the blob to get too big on the putty knife where it'll drip down on things. Just take that right off like that. All the way around. The more we can actually physically lift off of there, the easier it'll be. The next step will be to use some denatured alcohol with some paper towels to clean up the remaining sealant. We want to be careful that we don't take too much out. We just want to clean off the surface lightly. Check with the sealant manufacturer to find out what solvent they recommend. Using the wrong solvent could harm your sealant. So that completes this port light. Only seven more to go. Done correctly, this should give you many years of leak-free service out of your port lights. Until next time, this is Captain Wayne wishing you fair winds. <laughs>